In this short botanical art adventure I want to show you some work that I've been doing recently and hopefully you'll pick up some tips for your own botanical art. Here you can see some paintings that I've been working on for a commission. These are going to be put on a display panel in a garden to show what plants are in the rockery. So these pictures you will see are smaller than I would normally work and so that was quite a challenge for me. So what I needed to do was capture the essence of each plant but not necessarily show all the detail. So let me show you these pictures one by one and you will see uh, how I went about it and what I learnt along the way. So with this thrift painting, the thing that I was particularly pleased with were the leaves. So you've got these pink pom-pom like flowers and the leaves have got a, a grassy like toughiness about them. And by putting pale green leaves in the background you get this sense of depth and the sense that there's just this little clump of leaves and a lot more going on behind. So I, I was quite pleased with the effect that that gave me. There are a couple of yellow flowers in this set and yellow as we know are always quite a challenge. So what I do when I'm painting yellow flowers is to use warmer yellows and oranges in the flowers uh, to create the shadows rather than shadowy colours because they start looking dirty if you do that. Um, once I've done that I may add some greyer colours you might see on this golden basket plant here. Um, and I thought it was getting a bit grey, a bit dirty, but I think overall the flowers have stayed really bright, so I'm quite pleased with the way that those have come out too. So on this one again you'll see the oranges that I've used for my, what you would call shadow colours. White flowers also featured in this set, and again if you're a botanical artist you know this is quite a challenge. So I've got a candy tuft and a white dianthus here. Now the two things that I did with these is that because it's white flowers on white paper, I put a pale lemon, clear lemon wash on the flowers first, just to distinguish them from the backdrop. And I think they still read as white flowers, so I was pleased with that. And the other thing I do is rather than using just a single grey for your shadows, try mixing different greys, so you might get a pinky shadow, you might get a greeny shadow, you might get a more bluey shadow, and by doing that your picture will look more realistic, And uh, because if you use one grey it will look like a graphite drawing potentially. You have to be careful not to go too strong or cover too much of the white flower or it will start looking like a grey flower, but if you can get it right, um, yeah, it works quite well using those different greys. When I was painting this rock rose I was a bit afraid that I'd gone too dark with my greys because I painted these two little flowers first. But what I discovered was that rather than giving up at that stage, if I painted in the stem and the buds and some of the stamens on the flowers, I was quite happy with how the flowers looked. So if you are painting white flowers, don't give up too soon. Put some of the context in so you can see how the whole picture's working and uh, yeah you may find that they're not as grey or dirty looking as you first feared. Now somewhere there is a gentian here so this blue flower now I'm not a great fan controversially of French ultramarine because I don't like the way it behaves. I love the colour but I don't like the way the paint the watercolour behaves. Anyway I couldn't avoid it for this painting here because of the colour of the gentian and what I point out here is for bright flowers is don't go in too thick with a paint the temptation is to get the full strength blue over the whole thing and that would just really kill the flower so leave some areas light and you use full strength blue in some of the places and it will read as a nice bright blue flower. One last thing going back to the yellow flowers here what you might notice is that actually the leaves are a greyish colour. Now if you think of your three primary colours, you've got the yellow, you've got your red or more correctly magenta, you've got yellow, magenta and a blue. So if you're trying to mix a green you will mix a yellow and a blue but if you find that you keep adding blue and you're still not getting the colour, the only other colour that you could add of the, your three primary colours is a sort of red or a pink or something in that area of the colour wheel 
and by adding that to your green you should grey it down and dull it down. If that doesn't make sense I'll do another video at some point about that. But that's how you get these greyish colours. It seems counterintuitive to be adding a reddish colour to what is effectively a green. But that's the way you get these colours here. So I hope you've learnt a few things there from my own experience. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more of my botanical art adventures. Visit my website if you'd like to see my paintings, courses and resources. Thanks for watching.